the guys returning, you have so many scholarship guys, what was your game plan going into the spring to try to get those guys all the turns I know you want them to have? Um, you know, I think just kind of my method since I've been here is just trying to figure out, okay, going into spring, which each guy need, what each guy needed to work on. Um, you know, obviously I got a good group of young guys and then you got the two older guys with Sean and Kamari. And as a coach, you want to focus on seeing how far along you can get the young guys when it comes to spring, when it comes to spring ball, being that they're here. And then with Sean and Kamari, I just wanted to get those guys to get a sense of, you know, that leadership portion of it during spring ball, but then also seeing where they could take the next step in their game, you know, for Sean to just continue to build on his protection um, with Kamari, just his overall game, because those guys have been, you know, some contributors uh, over the past couple of years. But really Really, it's really about kind of cycling through the whole group and getting everybody their techniques and their fundamentals down. And for the young guys, as you know, it's just trying to get, keep them from drowning, keep them swimming and kind of taking the next step there, see if they can get to land. One guy that doesn't seem like you have to worry about him drowning is JV on Sunday. It seems like he really just brings it every single day of practice. Just what have you seen from him in the past year, given he wasn't able to do a ton last year? Um, you know, I think the one thing that uh, – I, I guess the biggest growth I've seen in Javion is probably not even football. It's probably been just him opening up a little bit more as a person, um, and you know, just being you know understanding what it means to be a part of a program. And then if you kind of fast forward to where we're at now, so far in spring ball, I think he's really taken this next step as far as uh, trying to stay dialed in with the heavy installs that we're giving him, uh, getting better in his footwork in the run game, and you know, understanding who he needs to block and pass protection. Um, uh, obviously, he's a young guy, so there's a lot of technique and stuff that he needs to continue to build on. But just uh, his openness and willingness to learn is probably where I've seen him take the biggest step, and that's on and off the field. Where is uh, Richard Newton right now? Is he? I know he had a kind of a delayed start, unfortunately. Uh, how's he doing? Rich is doing good. I mean, it's just uh, one of those things where you know things happen. It's college football, as we know, the world happens <laughs> during the pandemic. But uh, Rich is doing good. I think um, the one thing I will say, uh, his focus has been really good this spring and this off season so far. And you know, I'm just excited for him to keep going and keep building on his momentum as we go into the summer, leading into the season. As you guys know, uh, Rich has some really good talent and we're hoping to showcase that this this spring and definitely into the season as we move forward. Is he different in any way? He looks a little bigger. You know, um, is he probably, he might, you know what, I don't know if he's bigger uh, weight wise. I will say this, he looks a little bit faster to me, um, you know, running the ball when he has the ball in his hands and I would think that he has a little bit more confidence in his pass protection. Um, and you guys going over here, yeah, these guys that know me, I'm talking about pass protection. That's all I really focus on because that's big to me. But I, he has more confidence in his technique and pass protection. So those will be the two things I've seen a change in Richard's speed and then his confidence in his technique and pass protection. What have you seen in, in Cam Davis's development and how is he a different player now than he was, say, a year ago or two years ago? You know, it's funny, Cam Davis is one of those gems that you just kind of keep chipping at and eventually it's going to come out. You know, he's had, you know, a couple bumps and bruises the past couple years. And, um, you know, I'm really excited. You know, his his overall game, I think, has taken the next step. You know, there was one thing, you know, it was a time where does he really know the plays? Does he really know protection? But I will say this, over the course of this, what, we into the third week right now, over the course of these past two weeks, I have seen that game I think the one thing that I'm excited for which you know I think Husky fans are going to be excited for this is a guy who is a difference maker with the ball in his hands he has the ability to change gears um, he's tough he's physical uh, but we just we, we got to get these guys taking the next step and not giving them too big of a plate early but I do I'm really excited about where CD is at have you changed the way you're going out and profiling recruits for your position it seems like you're going after guys that are just a lot bigger you've gone down into Texas or is this just the way the cards have fallen? Well, I'm going out to get the best running backs for this program. <laughs> um, I, I would say um, I do feel like you know, we have gotten some bigger backs over over the course of the over the course of the past couple of years, and you know, Texas, we've been able to get some pretty good guys out of uh, Javion and Caleb Berry. But you know, Sean has has been a contributor here, just like Kamari. And then I look at Rich, and I look at CD. Uh, I would say this: I think the thing that I am trying to do is do my best to get that all around back. 
who can, you know, hopefully be that, you know, for, for obviously we want first round draft picks, second round draft picks, but at the same time, guys that can push the needle to take us to that next step when we start talking about winning those Rose Bowls and national championships. Um, I think the past couple years, just the guys that I've evaluated and the way it's gone down in the recruiting process, we've ended up with some really good players that I think are young, that I think are going to be able to take the next step and help us as a running back unit be really solid. So is there intentionality in your recruiting in terms of getting a, a bigger guy that can catch the ball in the bat, in the flats as well as take it up the middle? Yeah, I mean, obviously I want guys that can do both. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think I just think the bigger guys help move the chains. I think the bigger guys are stouter, a little bit stouter in pass protection. I do think this, bigger backs wear defenses down in the second half. You know, so if you kind of put those together and you start looking at how these some of these guys we've recruited have, you know, have are going to turn out and, you know, watch them as they go gone through their seasons in high school before they got here, you know, you get that bigger guy that, you know, is fast, is quick, that can catch the ball, that hopefully can do some of that stuff on Saturdays for the dogs. When, when Coach Lake decided to include a lot more live reps into the spring, you, you could argue that the running backs were maybe the most effective group by that because of what you would do normally. How, how has that really impacted how you've gone about this spring? I think it's awesome. Um, I think so many times, as a, especially as a running back and then a running back coach, and maybe even as a, the offensive coordinator, maybe, you know, sometimes that whistle, you know, it's it's interesting. You know, the run you're looking at and the whistle's blowing, you're like, that was a two-yard game? What just happened right there? Like, guys have momentum. They fall forward and things like that. So having those live reps and having guys actually getting hit, actually getting tackled, I think it's great for my running backs because we preach ball security and ball security is not affected till you really are getting hit. It teaches toughness as well um, because, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot easier to get back up when you be getting tagged off and wrapped up and fitted on, but when you actually have to get off the ground and get back up for the next play, it's big. And obviously for our program as a whole, it's good for the defense as well, making those guys have to tackle, you know, because that's what they're going to be doing in the fall. We're not just fitting up and wrapping up. So it's really good for the program, and I'm excited that, you know, we're all able to do a little bit more of those live tempo periods during spring practice and you know, when coach likes to throw them in there because it's great for our team. Well, where's Sam Adams right now? Uh, Sam Adams is good. You know, he's... Uh He's smart. Um, he knows what he's doing. He's a really gifted athlete. You know, obviously his uh, dad being a D tackle, but he is really athletic. He has really soft hands. Um, he's a really sharp kid. He understands what we're doing in protection and in the pass game. I'm excited to kind of get him going when he when he gets when he gets ready to go. But I'm I think Sam Adams is one of those guys that we should be excited about. You know, it's just with all these young guys, it comes back to just keeping them consistent. And Sam's thing is, you know, just like all these young guys, so I'm not pointing him out, as just being consistent day after day. And that's what you preach to the young guys because we are throwing a lot at them. All right. All right. Coach Adams is here, so we'll put one to go. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach. Yeah.